supporting us from receive our greetings here from Babuno Church online. And I just want us to spread some, you know, some Jesus love today. And I want to remind you something that Jesus loves you. Tell your neighbor, in, in case they've forgotten. And for you at home, if you're in someone, just tell them Jesus loves you. And the amazing thing about this love of Jesus is that before we love him, he first loved us. He says that in first John. 419 that we love because it must love that
outrun it. It's so high that we can't go over it. It's so deep that we cannot go under it and so wide that we cannot go around it. Even our minds cannot comprehend this love of Jesus. And so we're choosing to follow this Jesus who loves us, who loves us to the point of death. And I want to invite you to join us as we sing this anthem that has become an anthem of this house, that every day we've decided we'll pick up our cross and follow Jesus because he has good plans for us. So I invite you to join us as we sing this song so that I can do it.
mighty new into our lives, into every aspect of our lives, that our finances will follow you, that our families will follow you, our dreams, our aspirations, our ambitions, Lord, our marriages, our friendships will follow you. And so we're giving up freedom today so that we find true freedom in you. Jesus, you're the one that we follow. And it's in the name of Jesus we have just praised and worshipped and the people of God declare. People of God say, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you doing today? It's so good to see every single one of you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for worship. Uh, we are so excited. Wherever in the world you're watching from, you may be part of the Mavuno family, you're part of the online church, watching from different parts of the world, or maybe you're watching it uh, locally. You may be actually watching it by yourself or you're watching with a community of people. Wherever you are, we are so, so grateful uh, that we can do this together, that we can worship God as his people together. And you know, one of the things we do every week is we gather to... Uh, give our, our worship to God. And one of the ways we worship is through our tithes and our offerings. And so I want to give us an opportunity now to give uh, one of the scriptures that comes to mind as I think about our giving and, 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 and the, the attitude of our giving, the how of our giving. Uh, in Psalm 100, it says in verse 4, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, come into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, for our God is good. And his love endures forever. You know, one of the things that I always want to put on my heart when I come to give is just that sense of gratitude. That sense of my goodness. I'm giving thanks to a God who is so good. His mercy endures. He's been with me all these years. He continues to be with me. And I know many of you, this is your attitude when it comes to our giving. We don't give because we have to. We give because we want to, because it's our way of worship. And so as we give and as we prepare ourselves as well for God's word, allow me to just speak a blessing over us uh, as we come before God. Father, thank you so much for your people. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you that we can worship you in song. Thank you that we can worship you by listening to your word. Thank you that we can worship you with our giving, our tithes and our offerings. And I pray that, Lord, indeed, as we come, you would fill our hearts with such thanksgiving. That, Lord Jesus, this would be our how, our attitude of thanksgiving as we come to you. For you are good and your mercies endure forever. And Lord, as we are honest, as we reflect back on our week, you have rescued our lives. You've helped us in places where we never thought uh, we'd get through. And there are even things we didn't see. There are dangers we didn't see that you took us through. Our hearts are full of gratitude. And so receive our giving, receive our offerings, receive our tithes. Uh, Lord, uh, our partnership with you. We pray that this resource that we give will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. It will bring you great joy. And that, Lord, as we give, I pray that you'd also uh, replenish uh, all those who give, every household represented here. And that, Lord Jesus, you would only bless us more so we can be generous on every occasion. And so I speak every blessing. And, Lord, I also pray that as we receive your word today, open our hearts, prepare us for everything you want to teach us. And I pray that, Lord, every single one of us, uh, while on others you're calling, do not pass us by. Help us to hear your word. We receive it with joy and with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name and God's people say it. Amen. Hey, I'm so, so uh, uh, gr grateful to be bringing you God's word today. And uh, we're, we've been, uh, we're concluding a series. And I want to start by asking you the question uh, of the day. I want to ask you this question. What are some of the things that are likely to distract and make you lose focus when you have a task in front of you? What are those things? When you have an important task, you're trying to focus on it. But there are some things that are likely to distract you or make you lose focus. All of us are different. What are some of those things for you? Can you think about them? Uh, maybe even shout about if you're in a room uh, with some friends watching this. Uh, what are some of the things that distract you the most uh, or easily distract you when you've got an important task or project ahead of you? Now, we're all different and we get distracted by different things. Uh, for some of us, it's digital distractions. Uh, your social media, your notifications, your email, your smartphones. 
uh, and those things just come up and it's like you you get on it and it, you're gone. You know, you just get distracted. For others, it's environmental uh, distractions. Things around your workplace where you work. It could be noise uh, that happens around you or the clutter of your workspace or that urge you get to clean. You know, especially when your mind isn't, it's not connecting things well and you're just like, man, you notice all the stuff around you that needs to be fixed and you start fixing other things and you leave the task in front of you. Or it could be personal distractions. Things like hunger always checks in at the wrong time or sleepiness or thirst or checking what's in the fridge. You ever get that thing of just, you go to the fridge and you look and you looked again just a few minutes before. It's just personal distractions. Uh, or it could be mental distractions. Things like overthinking. Or, and so you find yourself just paralyzed as you're thinking about all the things you could write or think or say or procrastination. Maybe it's just that sense of I can do this tomorrow. Uh, so those are mental distractions. Others, it's social distractions. Things like your colleagues or your family members, people calling you at inappropriate times just when you're in the role and then your mom rings or there's a doorbell, somebody knocks on the door. It's like there's so many distractions that come in that social sphere as well. Now for me, as I think about all these, I, my confession, can I give a confession? It's like my confession. The one that really distracts me, and I'm really ashamed to say this in public, is WhatsApp. Like seriously, uh, I've even kind of like removed it from my front screen so it's not if there are no notifications or anything but sometimes what's happening is I'm busy working on a sermon I'm busy working on something and then I remember someone was meant to send me a message you, you know you can see where this is heading huh? and, and 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 so I, I pick it up and I check and off, more often than not the message hasn't even come in but then I see like five other messages that demand att you ever see those messages that just like read me please and so I read one and then it's got a link and I click on that link and the next thing I know, 10 minutes have elapsed, 20 minutes have elapsed and I'm thinking like, what, what was I, like, where, why did I even come to this app? And by that time, maybe I've even lost the flow of what I was working on. Does any of you, like, kind of, anybody, are you laughing at me or are you laughing with me here? It's like some, some of you can relate to what I'm saying. Now, I suspect for every one of us, we have a distraction, something that serves as a distraction for us whether it's Instagram or it's TikTok, whether it's YouTube or Netflix, whether it's Facebook or the English Premier League, uh, we all have something that distracts us. And, and some of these distractions are fairly harmless. I mean, they don't ultimately seem like they can affect the, the, uh, the, 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 the direction of your life. But I don't know if you know that there are certain distractions that may not only just get in the way of finishing our tasks, but they may actually change the direction of our lives. For example, I can get so absorbed with a good hobby like sports or fitness, that it eventually harms my relationships with my family. And the time I could have spent with my family, I end up being out in the gym or out in the... So it was a good thing, but it, it, it messed a goal that I thought was important. Or I could get so consumed with a romantic relationship that it distracts my family, it, it derails my values and it negatively impacts my journey of faith. Or I may desire a certain career path but my desire for good times and for partying and for, and for binge watching TV interferes with something that I thought was a very valuable goal. Or I can desire a great relationship, but my pursuit of wealth, my desire for a certain lifestyle, cuts in on the goal and sidetracks me from something that I consider very important to myself. So, so you, as you can see, all of us, I mean, we all set off in life with certain hopes, certain directions, certain goals. That's what this series has been about. But along the way, it's so easy to get sidetracked by things, all sorts of distractions, all things that just come in the way. And one day we wake up and ask, man, I was supposed to be there. So how come, how in the world did I end up here? I don't know if that is something that ever has come to your mind because it's something that is really important as we go through this series called Roadmaps. And for our visitors, we're going through this, this series, it's called Roadmaps. We're asking ourselves, what does it take to get from here to where we desire to in life? What are some of the things we have to do differently, the decisions we have to make differently in order to get to the things that we desire, the things that God has called us to? And we've been going through the book of Proverbs. Uh, we found that it's an amazing book of wisdom written by King Solomon thousands of years ago, full of ancient principles that are extremely relevant to modern day decision making. And we've looked at three important principles so far. The first one, we call it the principle of the path. And we say Every path has a destination. It's not your intention, but your direction that will get you to where you're going. So that's the first thing we say. Look, it's not, uh, you might desire it, but it's not your desire. It's not your intention. It's what you're actually doing, the path you're on. 
that will get you to the direction you're going. And then we talked about the principle of danger signs, very closely connected. We learned that the difference between wise and foolish people is that the prudent or the wise, they see danger and they take evasive action, they take refuge. But the simple keep going and they pay for it. Either they ignore the danger signs or they, they don't see them at all and they pay the penalty for it. And we learned that we must recognize the danger signs in our lives. And then last week, we learned the principle of supernatural navigation. And it states that surrender activates supernatural navigation. It's not more information you need in life. It's actually divine direction. Divine direction is more important than any information that anyone could ever give you. And, and today we want to wind down this series with, uh, with a very important uh, uh, facet uh, to this whole conversation, which is how do I ensure that I don't lose focus along the journey? How do I lose? I mean, I may be on the right path. I may be going in the right direction. How do I ensure I don't lose focus and end up being sidetracked from my desired destination? And this is a critical principle. I want to let you know it's so crucial, so critical that the consequences of ignoring this one can be deadly. They can be, cru they can be horrible. And sadly, exhibit A, the very person who demonstrates how terrible a thing it is to ignore this principle is the person who actually wrote the principle himself. Uh, King Solomon. I mean, King Solomon, third king of Israel, uh, son of King David, uh, 20 years old when he ascends the throne. God gives him this uh, like blank check, choose what you want in life. He desires, he asks God for this amazing gift of wisdom to make the right uh, decisions. Uh, and as a result, God not just gives him wisdom, but makes him fabulously wealthy. People travel from far and wide to hear his wisdom, to learn from him. He writes many books. Uh, three of them actually make it into the Bible. Song of Songs, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. I mean, this guy has got it all. His reign started superbly well. And he turned Jerusalem into this thriving metropolis, building majestic, a, a majestic temple for worship, expanding the nation's borders so the, they were the widest and largest that ever been and actually would ever be in history. And, and Solomon was on his way to his destination, becoming the greatest and wisest king, uh, becoming like his father had been, living a great legacy. But that's where things turned tragic. Many years before this, God had actually uh, picked the people of Israel as his chosen people, the people through whom he would bless all the other nations on the earth. That was their mandate. And he gave them the law and the law prescribed how they were to live. And then God basically said to them, I'm about to give you a land. I'm about to take you into a land. When you get into that land, you're going to be distracted or tempted to be distracted by the things that are going on around you. You're going to look at all the other nations and how they do government and say, maybe that's how we should do government. Or how they do their finances and economics. And you're like, maybe that's how we should live. That's how we should look for money like these people. Or how they do relationships and the sensuality of their relationships. And say, man, that looks so attractive. Maybe that's how we should do relationships. And God was like, don't. Don't yield to that temptation. Don't get distracted because if you do, you will be sidetracked from your destination. But in his older years, when he was at his most successful, when everybody admired him, he was at the top of his game. Not only did Solomon <laughs> disregard God's instructions, but he even ignored his own wise sayings that he wrote with the wisdom that God gave him. So 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 1, it narrates the story for us and tells us that King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women. Why does it say however? The reason it says, however, is because this is written at a time when Solomon was completely successful. So chapter 10 is telling us about all his crazy successes, how wealthy he was, how famous he was, how well he was doing. But there's this little word, however. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. And then a few verses later, verse 4, it says, as Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God as the heart of David, his father, had been. Now, this is a profound scripture because it, if I, in many ways it reminds me of a certain Mavuno worship song called My God Loves Me. It has an interesting lyric. It says, no honeys or monies would lead me astray. I think in Solomon's case, it was the honeys that did him in. And he was well on his way to becoming this amazing king. But he got distracted along the way. 
And it wasn't long before this great nation he inherited that could have been an incredible nation. Uh, it became torn into two. It became embroiled in constant warfare. They entered into battles with their neighbors and eventually they were taken captive and taken into exile for 70 years, completely destroyed, their temple desecrated. What a tragic ending. All because of the choices he made and the destruction that Solomon faced along the journey to his goal. And here's a real catastrophe. If Solomon had listened to what God had told him earlier, if he had not been distracted, he would have gotten to his destination in one piece. You see, earlier, God gave him some really powerful principles. I mean, it was like stuff that he was, in fact, he, he was given and he even was like, I know this stuff so well, I'm going to teach it to other people. Unfortunately, he disregarded his own words. So if you read the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 25 to 27, let's just read what he wrote. This, this is the, the, the amazing words of wisdom that Solomon wrote. He wrote, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly up on, before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet. Be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. You know, God had given Solomon the wisdom to understand that if anyone had a desired destination, if you had a God-given destination in your mind, it was critical for you to always keep your focus or your attention on the journey ahead, on the thing that God had called you to. It was so easy for you to be lured to turn to the left or to the right. But if you did and got distracted from your calling, then it would end up in evil. Now Solomon, he wrote this stuff, but he didn't heed this powerful principle. And I call this the principle of focused attention. And this is what that principle says. It says your attention will influence your direction and your direction will influence your destination. Your attention will influence your direction and your direction will influence your destination. Let me illustrate this. There's a very dangerous shop in Nairobi for those of you who live in Kenya and it's called House of Leather. How many of you have ever shopped there? <laughs> You know, this, this shop, it's an amazing shop because it has an amazing array of miscellaneous items, many of which are inexpensive, although if you shop there for after the first time you shop, you'll soon realize that there are actually many really expensive items there as well. But that's not the danger. The danger is not what it carry, what's in the shop or how much the things cost. The danger is how the floor plan of that shop is arranged. So basically, once you get into the shop, you realize that the whole shop is arranged as one aisle. It snakes past the entrance and goes round and round. It's like a giant maze. And all the items are arranged on the sides of that same aisle. And I don't know whether this thing was just so clever or even maybe criminal because it depends on your perspective. These guys are so smart. Unlike a supermarket where you can regularly just decide which aisle to go to. In this one, once you enter, there's no turning back. It's like it's only one way. You can't go back the, the way you came out. And it's like you have to go through the whole shop passing every single item before you come out at the exit, at the cashier's register. And, and along the whole way, of course, you're going to be inundated by store attendants everywhere. They have hand baskets to offer you because of course you're going to find something you didn't come to buy. That you're like, my gosh, that only costs this much. And you buy it. And the basket fills up. And as soon as they notice it's full up, guess what? A, a shopping trolley will show up faster than you can even imagine. And because the shop has so many knickknacks and miscellaneous items, you didn't, things you didn't even know you needed before you got there. It's like you saw them and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I really need this in my house. I mean, this shop has, <laughs> it has claimed the salaries of many unsuspecting shoppers, both male and female, by the way. And some of them are listening to this message guiltily, you know? It's like your victims, any victims out there of House of Leather, it's like we should start a support group. I think there's a support group loading for victims of House of Leather. It's like, it's like this incredibly smart thing where they've created a, a, an aisle of distractions. And many times, Life can be that aisle of destructions. You know, we walk along and life just gives us companions willing to sidetrack us and all kinds of things to just uh, get our eyes off where we came, what we came for. But the word of God to Solomon was very simple. It's like, look straight ahead as you're walking through life. Don't lose focus on what I've called you to. Like, reflect regularly on your destination. That's what God is saying. Reflect regularly on your destination. 
to avoid the temptations because if you look to the right or to the left, you will sidetrack side your whole journey. And you see, that's what happens to Solomon. He starts looking to the right or to the left and pretty soon he's completely lost because you know, God ha- knows how s- distractions have the power of keeping us from finishing well. Now, maybe you have a, 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 a destination in your mind in your relationships and you know the kind of marriage you want to, to have in life. And, and you know the kind of children you want to have. And God would say to you, keep your eyes on that destination. If that's your goal, and that's the thing you know God wants you to do, then make sure that you prioritize and keep your eyes, your, your focus there. Because you see, along the journey, it's going to be so easy to get distracted. And you're going to find your workplace starts to set impossible goals that will make sure you neglect your family. You're going to sacrifice your, your family on the altar of success. And at that point, you're going to have to decide, is this, is this where I was going or is this a distraction? Or maybe uh, uh, you're, you're spending too much time alone in the office with your colleague and pretty soon before you know it, you're looking to the right and to the left and you're in an emotional affair. It's not what you set out to do. You got distracted. You're heading to destination A, but all of a sudden you find your own path B. And, and that's, that's a danger in the family sphere. It happens in the business sphere as well. You have a business. Your desire is to honor God with your wealth, with your business practices, but the business environment has gotten tough and you find yourself struggling to succeed and maybe you get into a panic. You look to the right or to the left, you start panicking. Will I pay salaries? And you forget that God is the one who gave you that business in the first place. And you start thinking about all the things you have to do and you find yourself taking shortcuts that are not honoring to God because you lost focus, you got sidetracked. Or maybe the opposite. It doesn't always happen with, de- with difficulty. Sometimes it's because your business is thriving so much and the money is flowing in. That's exactly what happened to Solomon, isn't it? He didn't get sidetracked because of difficulty. He got sidetracked in a time of success. And you're so successful that you start forgetting who gave you the business in the first place. And all of a sudden, you no longer have time to serve in church. You no longer have time for prayers. You no longer have time to attend a discipleship group. Your gaze has shifted. And for some of us, life has been tough. Maybe mentally, maybe relationally, maybe health-wise. And, and maybe you lost a loved one. And, and when you look to the right or to the left, you, you see fear, you see anxiety, you see offense beckoning. And so many things that are telling you, surely God can't be good. Surely God can't allow this to happen to you. You've been so faithful to him. And as you linger there, as you stare at these distractions, pretty soon you find yourself succumbing to being upset with God, to being disappointed with his people, to struggling to pray. That's a distraction. You need to notice it's here to, dis- to sidetrack you, you from your goal. Or maybe you yield to anger and you say, this road is not even worth it. Uh, nothing good is coming out of my faith. I want to exit. And you find yourself alighting from that faith that you have. And, and these are scenarios, by the way, that happen to the best of us. Distractions come against the best of us. And I see the Lord speaking to Solomon, uh, through Solomon, to the rest of us. And he's saying, don't do it. Don't turn your gaze there. Keep your eyes on the goal. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your attention straight ahead. Why? Because your attention will influence your direction. And remember, your direction influences your destination. Now I want you to notice that there are two types of things that engage attention. The first is the things that grab your attention. This is why it's like involuntary. They just grab your attention. And then there are those things that you give attention to. The things that grab your attention and the things you give your attention to. The things that grab attention are usually, they usually get us in trouble, if you're really honest. Because they're hardly ever in front of us. They're things on the side. You are focusing on something and they grabbed your attention. It's like tracked your attention. And the more attention you give those distractions, the more you gaze at them and the more you're likely to drift uh, towards them. I mean, it's like you're driving a car. Uh, maybe you're driving a car that you really enjoyed and then your friend comes by in another car that is like, Wow. It's like your dream car. He's driving your dream car, even the car you haven't even dreamt about yet. And it's like you're in class together with him. And you're looking, and guess what? The more you stare at that car, the chances are you're going to lose your own lane. And eventually, you're going to find yourself crashing. The reality is, it doesn't matter how fast or slow you are moving, the outcome will be the same. You're going to drift from your lane. Why? Because your attention will influence your direction, and your direction will influence your destination. And you see these things that grab our attention. They influence the direction of our lives. And we see it happening on a daily basis. Chances are there are people that you wish you never met. 
The relationships you wish you never got into. Uh, phone numbers you wish you never called. DMs you wish you never responded to. Business opportunities you wish you never jumped into. You know, some of you got into quail and, and forex and other things because everyone was doing it and you just got distracted and just was like, my God, let me do this thing. You had a thought about it. It wasn't even where you were going. Lifestyle choices you wish you never made. Why? It's because something grabbed and captured your attention and it sidetracked you and put you on a different path. And as a, see, the, what happens is this path often lead to regret. Why? Because your attention influences your direction and your direction influences your destination. I hope, this is, I hope this is making some sense to somebody out there. Now, apart from the things that grab our attention, they're also the things we choose to give our attention to. And there's a big difference between your attention being grabbed and you giving it. The first one has to do with emotion. Like something just happened. You didn't have any control to it, with it. The second has to do with intentionality. When I give my attention intentionally to something, it's a decision that I made. It was not based on emotion. And, and there's some friends, I suspect for some of us, there's some friends you need to be giving attention to very intentionally. Because maybe it's a relationship that you've not pursued, but it's a relationship with a mentor or a friend who makes wise decisions or some people who would have really helped you grow in your faith. But it's very easy to drift from them if you're not intentional with those relationships. For some of you, it's, a, it's your relationship with your discipleship group. And that's a group God has put in your life to help you achieve and arrive at your destination. But you need to be intentional. And it's like, this is going to keep you anchored. This is going to help you keep your gaze on the right things. And maybe your fence came in between you and you began to be sidetracked. But perhaps God is saying, this is a time for you to get your eyes off that destruction and reconnect intentionally with the right relationships. Uh, for some of you, there's a course you need to fix your gaze on. Maybe it's a financial course that will help you uh, figure out your finances. Maybe it's doing a marriage class or a parenting class. Maybe it's doing Mizizi to help you rejuvenate your faith. You see, it's not just about avoiding distractions. It's also about choosing what you focus on. What will you choose to fix your gaze on? For those of you who are married, where is the gaze in your relationship right now? Where are you giving your attention to? Is your attention being grabbed by your careers, by your kids, by your personal growth, by, by maybe even a third party, somebody you're paying attention to that you should be paying to your spouse? Remember, your attention, it's going to influence your direction. And your direction will influence your destination. Nobody ever gets divorced by accident. It, it was a process of attention that got distracted and led to a certain direction that ended up in a destination. And when you explore, you're going to start finding this is where we started losing focus and started looking at the wrong things. Maybe it's time to stop, start paying attention by turning your gaze back. Maybe having a regular date night, finding a marriage counselor, entering a marriage course or seminar, taking your eyes off that workmate or that gym colleague, uh, that gym mate, and, and, and start turning it back to where it needs to be. It's not just going to happen magically. It's going to take intentionality. Are we together? This is, I hope this is helping somebody in the, in, the, in the house to begin to understand, my goodness, it's possible. I have the responsibility. I have the power to do it and I have the power to determine the direction. Maybe you're a parent in the house. Where is your gaze currently fixed on? Are you paying attention to what your kids are consuming? Are you paying attention to their faith? Are you paying attention to whether they're growing in that faith? Are you keen to bring them to church on time? So they can begin learning to esteem worshiping God. Are you praying with them? You see, it's so easy to, for you to be so focused on making sure they go to the right school, making sure they have the right toys, making sure they're in the right sports, and, not, and to forget that those things are probably not the primary foundation you need to be building in their life. Because when they're in their 30s and 40s, the thing that will give you the greatest joy is knowing that their faith is solid. They're making value-based decisions. Are you focusing on the right, thing, right things? You don't want to start paying attention when it becomes too late when it becomes an emergency. Because remember, your attention will influence your direction and your direction will influence your destination. Now, Jesus said some very powerful words. Matthew 6, 22 to 23. And he said, the eye is the lamb of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. So, so it's like you're living in a village where there's no electricity. And, and you have to rely on a little handheld hand lamp. And basically what happens is that, that lamp is the one that determines what you see. Jesus is saying, our eye, our, the things that you see, the things that you gaze at, the things you pay attention to, that these are the, the, they're the lamp that lights up your whole body. 
They're the ones that allows your body to be full of light. What you pay attention to will direct your entire life, in other words. And if your eyes are focused on good things, your, 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 your body will be full of good things. Your life will be full of good things. If your eyes are focused on the wrong things, on bad things, what you're going to end up finding is that your body will be full of darkness, difficulty, challenge. And he's saying the things that you pay attention to, they're the ones that will direct your life. They're the ones that will choose the course of your life. Your attention will influence your direction and your direction will influence your destination. Now, next week, we want to start a brand new series. And it's going to be, um, I'm really excited about next week's series, by the way, our November series. is called This Is Us. And why I'm excited about it is because it's such an amazing time uh, in, our, in our history as a church. We're going to be reflecting on our unique identity as a church, celebrating the amazing life change of thousands who've experienced, many have experienced uh, uh, being part of Mavuno. And we're going to be also looking forward to the great things, the amazing things that God has ahead for us. These are great times to be alive and I really encourage you not to miss it. In fact, I want to ask you to invite some friends, invite a friend who invites a friend and get people to watch it with you. Don't just watch the message alone, but start a watch party in your house uh, and, and start to influence by getting people around you who can watch with you and be blessed with you. And, and perhaps you can even start by sending them a link to this series uh, as, as a way to build their curiosity before you invite them for next week. So I want to just really throw out that and say this is going to be really fun. But before we conclude our series today, I want to end with two questions. And the first one is, what is something that has grabbed your attention? What is, what, is, what is currently grabbing your attention? It could be someone who has captured your affection this season. It could be a hobby that you're extremely passionate about. It could be a strong emotion that is driving you right now. It could be a habit, something that you are, 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 are engaging in that is influencing the direction of your life. I think this first one is a self-awareness question. Just something to help you assess what is the thing that is influencing the direction that I'm taking? You know, because right now your direction is being influenced by the influence in your life, the thing you're paying attention to. And then number two, the second question. In each of the areas, the four areas we've discussed this month, whether it is faith, relationships, health, money, faith, relationships, health, and money, what, are, what is the direction you're facing and what do you need to avoid being sidetracked? In other words, what is the thing you really feel God wants you to achieve in each of these areas? And then what are the things that will sidetrack you that you need to now move your eyes away from and focus on the goal? I want you to prayerfully consider these questions this week. Even discuss them with your discipleship group. Allow God to search your heart. Like be real with each other and help each other begin to understand the places where your gaze needs to shift. Maybe even challenge each other, encourage each other and let's help each other to become everything that God wants us to be. So I want to pray for us as we conclude. And I pray that this series has been a blessing to you. I want to pray right now, Lord, I pray for somebody who's here who has realized that their gaze had been fi has been fixed on the wrong place. I sense that there are people here, Lord, who look at their relationships and they can tell I've been focusing. Maybe someone here who's even about to enter an affair, uh, who's just focused in the wrong things. This thing could destroy your life, but you're about to put your foot on that direction because your eyes have been focused in the wrong way. Uh, it could be in your finances. It could be in your parenting. It could be in your faith. But Lord, I just want to pray for that person right now that Lord, you'd help them to understand how to shift focus. I pray that Lord Jesus, as they see the danger they're heading in, the distractions in their life, that Lord Jesus, you'd show them that, how to turn their eyes back to the goal towards which you've called them. I also want to, be, to pray for someone who may have been focusing on the goal, focusing on the best for what you've called them to, but has been tired and it's been difficult, and it's been, they've been weary. It may be in their marriage. It's not giving them a lot of fulfillment right now. Maybe the business is not succeeding. The career world is frustrating, yet they have tried to be faithful. Lord, I pray right now that this Salmon series will be such an encouragement. I pray that today will just be water on a dry land. It will just be water to their souls, encouragement to them. And I pray that, Lord, they would leave this message today with just a renewed sense of passion for you desire to serve you, desire to do the right things and to stay on track. Lord, I finally want to just pray for somebody who's here who's not given their life to Jesus. And listen, if you've never given your life to Jesus, wow, what better opportunity. I want to lead you in a prayer right now if this is you. And if you're ready to give your life to Jesus, you're like, look, I realize I've been sidetracked by many things. And today I'm ready to give my life to my father and to stay focused on the life I was created for. If this is you, would you say this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, I come to you today 
to surrender my life to you. Forgive my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Come and lead me into the life that you created me for. From today, I'm your child. I am saved and I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if you pray that prayer, so proud of you, best prayer you could ever pray. And hey, use the information on the screen. Reach out to me. I'd love to send you an email, send you some information, something to just help you grow, take the next steps to becoming everything God wants you to be. Wherever you are in the world, don't worry, send it. We've got technology. We'll be so happy to reach out and just uh, be a blessing to you, help you take the next steps. Hey, I'm so excited, family. This has been an amazing series. I pray that as the end of the month comes, that you are blessed, you are refreshed, you're energized. And I pray that the Lord will just bless you this week with wisdom in all the decisions you're going to make. Listen, that may the Lord just grab your attention and keep you focused on Him. May the Lord remove all distractions from your life that will move you away from the direction He wants you to go. And may you be that person who walks in faith, who walks in wisdom, who walks in faithfulness every day of your life. I pray this blessing over you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and God's people say it. Amen.